Social Zoom Factor, episode 245. Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Are you a small business owner, entrepreneur, or work on a corporate team and tired of wasting money on social media training courses that are nothing more than random videos thrown up on a wall like webinar spaghetti? Finally, there's a solution to get you on the fast track to social media business success and help you learn how to generate brand awareness, leads, and sales without breaking the bank. Visit socialprofitfactor.com and use coupon code Zoom. Again, that's socialprofitfactor.com, coupon code Zoom. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. This is your host, Pam Moore. All right, today we have some special content for you. And I have a few questions I want to ask you first. Have you ever wished that you could create content for platforms like Facebook, like a boss, where you own it. You know you're prioritizing where you need to focus. You are not a slave to the Facebook algorithm. You know for a fact that you are choosing the right content formats, such as video or audio or visuals or text or all of the above that is going to connect you with your right audience, your target dream customer. Do you wish you knew some of those cool tools and tech that could really make your life easier or how you could curate and syndicate content like a boss. Maybe you don't even know what those things mean. Well, if you would like the answers to those questions, you have landed on the right podcast today. So I am going to share with you the audio version of a recent webinar that I just did that is titled Facebook Content Like a Boss. Now, you can also get an extra special Facebook content like a boss Zoom kit when you subscribe and you watch the entire webinar. So if you want to get your hands on that Zoom kit, which is loaded with tools and templates and resources, just head on over to themarketingnuts.com slash FB boss for Facebook boss. And that's again, themarketingnuts.com. And that's with a Z slash FB boss. And I know that a lot of you, you, you prefer audio. That's why you're listening to this podcast. So that's why I wanted to make sure I got this content here on the Social Zoom Factor podcast so that you got to listen to it. It has been one of our most popular webinars that we've done recently. And I also know that some of you also like to see visuals. So I want to make that webinar available to you and also, you know, give you access to that special Zoom kit. So I'm going to quit talking right now and I'm going to switch on over and let you in enjoy the Facebook content like a boss webinar. Best of success to you in getting your content rocking this year. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Social Profit Factor webinar. And today we are talking about how to create Facebook content like a boss. And we are going to be talking about how can you create content where you can start to own the Facebook news feed like a boss. So we are going to have a lot of fun today and we are going to cover a lot of material. So let's go ahead and let's dig right in and get started. So how do you know if this presentation is right for you today? You know that this is for you. If you are maybe an entrepreneur, maybe you're a small business owner, small business executive, maybe a marketer leading social on a larger team, or a digital marketer in small or large business, or maybe you just are curious to learn about how you can create more content that actually 
converts to real business in 2018. This is a picture of me. Uh, my name is Pam Moore. For those of you that don't know me, I'm not going to read all these b bullets to you, but I want to tell you that I spent 15 years working in corporate America uh, before I started my first agency. And it was like late 2009, early 2010. And I've been around the block when it comes to social and community building. I was doing social media before it was ever called social media. We were doing it the old fashioned way and, you know, building communities before there was Facebook and having to, you know, hodgepodge things together. But I speak and train all over the world. Um, we work with businesses of all sizes and we walk the walk, right? And so I don't have this slide here just to brag and show off numbers. I want you to know you're listening to somebody that knows how to, to build community and you're listening to somebody that knows how to drive action. So when it comes to online marketing, building community, connecting with audiences, we have an audience that scales over a million across the social platforms. We have a digital tribe that scales to 200 million. I have the Social Zoom Factor podcast that get, has over 1.5 million downloads. We get between 50 and 100,000 downloads of that podcast per month. And then we really drive innovation across the social ecosystem in our industry. We're about 18 to 24 months ahead in the areas where we focus. Now, our agency Marketing Nuts is co-owned by me and my partner, Josh Moore, and you will see him in the chat. He's there helping everybody and he'll be the one that will be tagging your questions and helping make sure they get started. But he is a very big part of our business and um, everything that we are doing here at today. So uh, here's just a snapshot of our clients. I put this up here because I want you to know no matter where you're coming from, no matter what industry you've worked in, you work in, we probably have um, worked in your industry or, or something close. And we work with small business all the way up to enterprise. Uh, we're partnered with brands like L'Oreal and we're delivering a training platform you know, for all of their 150,000 salons at this time. We help franchise organizations that are in startup, you know, all the way from solo entrepreneurs up to big brands. So we know our methodologies scale across industries and size of organization. Now we'll have several polls throughout this presentation. We want to get to know you, know where you're coming from so I can better customize the content as we go through and also so you can help get to know each other. So the first poll question is, how educated are you on the latest Facebook newsfeed changes on a scale of one to five with five being high. All right. Looks like looks like we have a little pretty educated crew today. So we got about 40 percent that say they are about a 30 percent. We got some overachievers at a 15 percent at four and then about seven percent of you are at five. That's good. So I am not covering in detail today the details of the Facebook announcement. Uh, I did a webinar where we covered that in detail last week. If you need access to that, I can can um, get you a link out to it. It's out on my blog. But in summary, Facebook definitely made some big announcements. Um, they're making changes to the news feed. They're demoting content for publishers, for brands, um, everything to be expected. So you may see some blog posts out there where people are saying, you know, the Facebook is done. It's over. Uh, it's not true. Those are fear mongers and they're likely wanting you to go t attend their event or buy their course. So it is not time to throw in the towel on Facebook marketing, okay? What it is time to do is to get our game face on. It's time to say, you know what? I'm not gonna lose this game. I need to play it. And um, f that's why you're here today is to figure out how can you win um, with Facebook marketing in 2018 focused on content. So poll question number two, do you have adequate time and money to invest in your online marketing today? Yes or no? Do you feel that you have the funds as well as the time that you need to be successful in online marketing? And be honest, right? I mean, what happens in this webinar today stays in this webinar. And that's one thing to be successful online. You have to get real with yourself. So 60% are saying yes. Uh, about 40% are saying no. Okay, so pretty typical. Usually we see higher numbers on the no, and I'll tell you, that's even a well-funded org. Okay, now everybody's being honest. There, now I have a 60% no, 40% uh, yes. And that's even if it's a large organization, right? And you'll think large organizations have huge budget budgets. The truth is they don't. They may have big budgets, but it's having to cover a lot more. So, I mean, we've worked with a lot of different size of clients. I'll tell you, everybody struggles for time and money. Nobody has ever came to me and said, Pam, I have so much money and time. I don't know what to do with it. I think I'll, I'll write, you know, give you my credit card and let's just spend it on social media. It doesn't happen that way. So what 
you do need to do in 2018, you need to be ready to work. And that's why I put the image here. I mean, it's going to be work. It's going to be muddy. You're going to fall down. You're going to have to get, wipe off your knees and get back up. But you're going to have to work. And so if you're looking for an easy button, it's not going to happen. Right. And I had somebody actually send me an email that was on our email list saying, you know, I don't have time to do the your training academy and I don't have money to outsource this. What should I do? And I, I wrote back to her and I said, you're going to have to pick one. Like you're either going to have to invest the time and or you also may need to get somebody to help you. So you're going to need to learn these things and you're going to need to invest time to learn and to execute them. So I want to get everybody on the same page. I have two two foundational slides here. What is Facebook and what is content marketing? Okay. Facebook in a nutshell is a platform that connects you with your customers, potential customers. It is to connect people with your business. Okay. Now, Facebook advertising is a platform that helps people discover your business. And if you have listened to any of my podcasts or my other webinars, blog posts, you've heard me say a million times, we're already moving to a pay to play world, right? So that's what you saw roll out recently with Facebook and those changes. That was to be expected, right? We know they're moving that direction. So that's why you need to really start to look at, if you haven't already, the Facebook advertising platform, because that's how really your content is going to get seen. There are ways you can you know, drive that content in an organic way so people will see it without you having to pay. And that's what we're talking about today. But you're still likely going to need to do some advertising. So what is content marketing then? So a lot of people you know, may think that content marketing is just creating content and putting it on Facebook, but it's actually more than that. Okay. Content marketing really is about creating and distributing relevant and valuable content that attracts, acquires, and engages a clearly defined and understood target audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. Let me break that down for you. Some keywords, valuable content, okay, that is driving, attracting, um, helping you acquire and engage what is a clearly defined and understood audience. Okay, you must know your audience. And we're going to talk about that. And you must know what action you want to drive, which means you must know why are you using Facebook today? So what is content? Content is something that is to be expressed through some medium, a speech, writing, or any various arts. Okay, so content comes in many forms, and I think these desserts here look really scrumptious. Now, a content marketing strategy, that is about planning, development, and management of content. Okay, so it's when you think about a strategy, it's not just saying this is what I'm going to go do. It's also, you know, it's the planning, but it's also the development and includes the management of your content. You need to have a strategy for how you're going to manage that, not only just create that content. So content marketing in reality, I mean, it is about so much more than just the content. And it's not just about creating, you know, sexy videos and images and, you know, the right words on a page. It's about really making that content work for your business so you can have that content be helping you convert real business. So let's go ahead and move into our 10 power tips that are going to help you create content for Facebook like a boss. So I'm going to move through these pretty quickly. This is one of those kind of rapid fire presentations. It's power packed. Um, they're all things that you can start to implement today. The goal is that you can take these ideas and then you are going to need to go do the work to further research them, understand what it means to your business. Okay. And we have a ton of resources that you can dig into for help with that. So number one is know your customer. Okay. And know yourself. You need to know who is your target audience? What do they need from you? How are you going to help them? And then you need to know your own brand. What unique value do you serve? What are your objectives? How are you going to help your customer achieve their goals? Um, how are you going to drive them to action? Mark Zuckerberg, you know, 
founder of Facebook, says very clearly in the recent announcement that our content needs to do more than be content that suggests somebody is consuming, right? It needs to drive action. So how are you driving your ideal customer to action? How are you motivating them? How are you empowering them? How are you engaging them? How are you improving their well-being? And those were Mark Zuckerberg's words. How are you driving them to an action that they will be so excited about that they're going to go tell all their friends, right? That's what I want you to think about. How can you be driving that action that makes them feel so good that they want to tell everybody about it? So poll question number three, do you have a plan today with goals that are documented for your online marketing that includes Facebook? Okay, so do you have a written plan that is documenting your goals? Why are you doing Facebook? Okay, so it looks like 70, about 60 to 70% are saying they don't have a plan with goals. That's okay. That's why you're here. So my goal is that after this webinar today, you go start working on your plan, right? And that you, you create a plan so that you can be successful. Because if you don't know what success looks like in 2018, guess what? you're likely not going to be successful at Facebook marketing. Okay. Power tip number two, stop random acts of marketing. Okay. Like a boss. I want you to quit doing random acts of marketing. How do you know if you have what we call the Rammies? Number one, it's not funded. So you're working on something and you really don't know how you're going to pay for it. Maybe you, you know, decide you're going to do some random Facebook advertising and you're like, okay, we're not going to pay the light bill to do that. Or I'm not going to do this project I already committed to in order to do this. Okay. Um, it's not in the plan, which means if you have a plan, even if it's chicken scratch, it's, it's something you just woke up in the middle of the night and you're like, that's a great idea. And you went and implemented it. That could be a random act of marketing. It's not integrated. So it's not integrated with everything else that you're doing. And it has no metrics for success. Now, if you've ever felt like today, and I'd love to see in the comments, you tell me if you've ever felt like this, where you feel like you are doing a lot of things. So you're crossing these random acts of marketing off your list. However, when it comes to uh, knowing whether those random things are successful, you can't say that they are or they aren't. And there's a reason because you never had any metrics or data or goals set to measure them. You didn't, you never defined what success looks like. So that's a key reason why many business leaders and marketers today will tell you social media didn't work for me. Well, what were you expecting from it? Right. So if you just launched your Facebook page this month and now you're saying that it didn't work for you, what really were your expectations? Were your expectations that you were going to have sales? If they were, you probably had wrong expectations, okay? So that's why you need to have true metrics for success that you know are achievable. You also need to strategize like a boss. So if you want to eliminate random acts of marketing, you need to align every single thing that you are doing to the needs of your audience and to your business goals. And I know a lot of you listen to my podcast. You, you hear me preach this all the time. And that's why. If you don't align to your audience, it's all for nothing. Okay, you have to figure out who is your target demographics. And it cannot just be anybody between the ages of 25 and 55, right? You've got to know who they are and you've got to know what success looks like. You also need to really be focused on the long term. Okay, you, you want quality over quantity. And we're looking for continued consumption and engagement. I don't want just the one night, you know, show where it looks awesome. And then, you know, I feel really bad after it in the morning. Um, we want quality, something that's going to keep us full for a long time and is going to want us coming back for more. Right. And I know these pancakes look really good. And I think that they would keep me coming back for more, probably full at the time. But we want quality over quantity, something that is scrumptious to your audience and to your target customers. So planning your content is so important in eliminating RAMs. And that's why we've included the content calendar template in our boss resource kit for you. Um, but you want to make sure you're planning your content with a yearly lens, you know, perspective, as well as a quarterly, a monthly, a weekly um, goals and themes. So I want you to know, okay, 
quarter one, you know, for the year, here are my big messages. Here's what I'm, how I'm wanting to position my brand. Here are the, the topics that I'm really wanting to establish thought leadership in, in what industries, with what niches. And then you, you start to break that down by quarter and then by month. Um, and then by day, and then every piece of content that you create should align back not only to the goals, but to those themes that you create. Okay. And I'm telling you, when you create content this way, it is so much more efficient and it is so much more effective. Um, you'll never run out of ideas when you start to really get a content strategy in place. You'll never wake up and say, oh my gosh, what am I going to write about today? You're going to fix that problem. Um, and then you will be able to plan then what's the right mediums to use. Do I use video? Do I use visual? Do I use audio? And you'll be able to better, you know, keep those things things varied as well as consistent and and focus on those needs of that audience. And our goal is that we create once and use many. So I really want you to be thinking evergreen content and um, evergreen content means we're creating content that we're able to leverage over and over again. So I want you to think sustainability. Um, how can you create one piece of content? You think of this presentation, for example. I have 10 power tips to for Facebook marketing success in 2018. Not only could I take each single tip and create multiple pieces of content for it. Each tip could be a blog post. It could be a video. It could be a podcast. It could be, you know, five different mini videos where I break it down. That's what we're talking about evergreen content. And um, if you think about this presentation, this, this content will have life after this year. Right. So it's not just about right now. It's about how can I build content that is going to be used and is going to be meaningful to my customer no matter what happens with Facebook, because no matter what happens with Facebook, the things that I'm teaching you today are going to help you be successful. Right. And that's the type of content that Google loves. That's where your you know, organic content um, reach really starts to come in. It's content that your audience is going to engage and share, which Facebook is going to love you for and put it in front of more people. So power tip number three is you need to learn how to do video like a boss. Okay. So if you feel uncomfortable in front of a camera, I know a lot of us do, um, you, you just can't ignore video anymore. And you're going to see even us. I mean, we're going to carve out the time this year to do a lot more video than we've done in the past. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So the day of totally perfected video is over and done. You need to, more importantly, just make sure that you're not only selling and that you are really focused on value to your audience and that you're speaking and using the same terms in the same language that your ideal customer uses on a regular basis and that you don't go straight for the sale, right? So, and when you're doing live video, it doesn't have to be all about you, right? You want that, you want that video to be evergreen, to have a shelf life. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that drives me the most nuts about live, live video on Facebook and some of the other platforms is people waste so much time talking about themselves and like blah, 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 blah. And, uh, or they're, you know, talking to everybody and talking about their hair and whether they look good on the video. I don't care. Like get straight to the content, start your video and say, hi, my name is Pam. This is what I'm going to help you with today. Right. And, and talk, uh, give them some value, earn their trust. Then in a couple of minutes, you can tell them where you work and what you do and, and how you're going to be able to help them. But you don't go straight for the sale from the first minute. Um, some ideas to get started. So you could think about doing both live video as well as recorded video. Okay. So you can do um, a weekly show. So you could create a weekly show where maybe you're doing an interview series and where you are doing training or you could be doing, you know, FAQs. You take the list of all the questions you've received from your customers and just start answering those in video. You can do Q&A, you know, so ask me anything. Go ahead and come on and just ask me um, anything you want to ask me. 
uh, behind the scenes. So it's great to show what's happening in your office, in your location. Take them on location with you to go visit a client or go attend an event. Um, you know, I was out last week at a couple of different events for with our local chamber of commerce. And I, you know, turn on my video for that. I share it live on my Instagram stories. So, uh, you know, take people where they can't go normally, where they see what you're doing in business and life. Uh, maybe show a day in the life of somebody on your team, right? It doesn't always have to be you behind video. If you're super uncomfortable, start with somebody else on your team. Um, and you go behind the scenes on what's happening in the day of their life at work. But Make sure you share your journey and you share your team. And if your team needs to have some education on how to do video, um, how to be comfortable speaking in front of people and on camera, get the training. You're going to need it. Power tip number four is geek out and integrate like a boss. Okay, so this is where I really want you to start to be proud if you're a little bit geeky, right? At the same time, I don't want you to waste too much time on the tools before you know why you're using the tools. But I want you to get comfortable with technology. I want you to feel that you can be a geek and you can begin to integrate these things on and off of Facebook like a boss. So when it comes to the geekiness piece. How are you leveraging key features of Facebook? So this is where you wanna be looking at things like the Facebook groups, uh, Facebook Messenger, advertising, live video, um, and stories. And you know that includes Instagram as well. So uh, when it comes to Facebook groups, now I wanna mention something here. You're gonna hear a lot of people this year very early on say, all right, you know, Facebook is making this announcement and changing the news feed. So we are going to make sure that we put everything into Facebook groups. Right now, Facebook groups are 100% you know, free, you can still get your content seen organically there without having to pay for advertising. People still get notifications, right? It's a great, great way to engage your audience. However, um, I'm telling you, it's not going to last forever. So over time, we are definitely going to see uh, Facebook more monetize these groups. And I think, you know, the days of it always being free organic reach are not always going to last. I, I wouldn't doubt that, you know, longer term, they add some features there and they start to charge us for access to those. We're always already seeing it happen with the Facebook workplace. So do not put all your eggs in the Facebook group basket. And I'm seeing a lot of people do that, which really scares me. So um, also Facebook Messenger. If you do not have Facebook Messenger set up, you must get that set up, okay? At minimum, get the auto replies going for your business, particularly if you have a, a place that people actually walk into or they need to book an appointment with you. Um, it's t It'll take you five minutes to set it up. And then you can also do campaigns through platforms like Minichat. And I encourage you, you know, to go subscribe Subscribe on like my personal page at Pam Moore or our Marketing Nuts Agency page on Facebook and subscribe to our messenger and you can see some of the things we're doing there. But, uh, you know, you can send out broadcasts. I mean, they're getting from, you know, 89 up to 100 percent open rates with, I mean, almost that high click through rates. I've ha I had two campaigns that had was like, uh, one had 100 percent click through. Another one had like 98 percent click through. OK, I've had a lot that have had 100 percent open rates. I mean. We cannot get that with email marketing anymore. And I still love email marketing. So that's why you need to take um, a look at the Facebook features and don't think the only way you're gonna get to your audience is by posting in the newsfeed. You need to leverage all of the things that Facebook is making available to you and you need to follow their news and watch what they're announcing. So integration, how does Facebook integrate and support your other marketing? So this is where you want to be looking at how does it integrate with your overall plan and what you're doing to market your business. It's not just about Facebook, right? Facebook uh, did not build Facebook to support your business, right? So they you're utilizing Facebook for free. So they don't owe you anything. You're not paying Facebook anything unless you're paying them for advertising. So how does it integrate with your overall content marketing strategy, your overall advertising, what you're doing with email marketing, what you're doing at the local level, local marketing, maybe influencer marketing, uh, PR, public relations, right? You need to integrate it, everything you're doing. SEO, I mean, Anything you're doing to promote your business and market your business is where you need to be figuring out how does it make sense for me to integrate Facebook. Poll question number four is, what percentage of the content you share on social media did you create yourself? Enter a percentage. 
that's weird. Okay. So power tip, you can, maybe you can just go ahead and write in the comments. I think that'll be good. So tell me, I'll go back to that slide. What percentage of content you share on social media did you create yourself? Okay. So what I'm trying to get at, is it content that you own? Maybe content that's about you versus third party content, content that is owned by somebody else. What percentage of the content is yours? Number five power tip, curate like a boss. Okay, so this means we are going to take other people's content and we are going to share it. And I'll tell you, when I first started my business um, and I left corporate, I spent almost six months of just curating content. And I built a very quick, profitable and successful brand, even before I had launched my own personal blog. Okay. Or our, hardly our agency blog that we threw together by just sharing the absolute best content that I could find out on the web. I got known right away for somebody that could curate amazing content from top sources. Do not be afraid to curate content, even from some of your top competitors. Okay. Because you're going to be tapping in there into their community, which I'll talk about here in a second. But you want to share, you know, top local news. Facebook has made it clear that they are going to be moving to the top of the feed local news. So share big things that are happening in your local market, your local neighborhood, you know, your surrounding areas. That is going to be good content to share. And make sure you're sharing those from reputable sites, whether it's on Facebook or off Facebook. But it's always good to try to find some of that news that's also published right on Facebook. Facebook loves you to share content that's coming from Facebook, okay? Um, trending videos that are engaging people. So no better way to share content that you know is going to get shared and engage with then if you it's already getting some movement right on the social web. So videos that are already trending, um, content that's already getting some movement, whether that be local content, whether that's industry content um, about your specific niche, maybe regulations, things that are happening, um, as well as partner and customer content is great to share. So you just want to be thinking about third parties and you know, what type of content you can be sharing and make that curated content part of your content strategy and put on that CIA detective boss hat. Okay. And, you know, find other people who are already creating, curating amazing content, right? There's people out there that are doing that every single day. BuzzSumo is a great tool for finding trending content and you can get a free trial there as well as um, they have some really affordable monthly plans. And that will be included a link to that in your uh, resource kit that I send you. And then, you know, do a search on Facebook for their trending content and videos, uh, searches on all the social networks for keywords and hashtags uh, are going to give you good results. Twitter has an advanced search that is very, very powerful. Um, social media dash management dashboards, uh, things like Hootsuite and Sprout Social, they can be very helpful in um, finding and curating content. And then social listening software. We love brand 24 and in full disclosure, we're partnered with them. They give us access to their software, but I really do like um, brand 24. It's great for monitoring your own brand keywords in your industry competition and make it super simple and affordable even for small business. And then Flipboard is another place where you can curate and kind of just bookmark content. And then you can also find content that other people have done the same. So uh, I also use just a lot of Google uh, folders on my Chrome or Safari browsers. So when I find a good article, I just will, um, you know, save it. I also have a daily kind of go to a folder of all the different types, all the different big blogs and, you know, publishers I like to go to bloggers that I follow, that type of thing. So just start to organize where you source your content and then share that content out. So tip number six is partner with other bosses. Okay, so and it's all about the OPC, baby. So OPC is other people's community and other people's content. Okay, you want to be really focused on how, who are local influencers, national influencers, people in your market that you can tap into their influence and their relationships and their content, but doing that in an authentic way. 
you're not wanting to use them. I want you to be thinking, how can I build relationships with these people? Um, how can I establish a relationship where we can maybe work together? And um, you know, you'll see a lot of buzz this year if you haven't already the past few years about influencer marketing. I did a webinar on that not too long ago as well. I encourage you to check that out where I really walk through a 101 level of what is influencer marketing. Um, you don't have to be hiring the Kim Kardashians of the world. Uh, you can hire you, you know, you don't even have to hire some of these influencers. You can just partner with them and find those micro influencers who maybe are just starting out or who don't have a, a huge online presence, but they may be the, the president of the local chamber of commerce, right? That could be an influencer for your business. One post on their page or a tweet from them may change your world. So who are the influencers that you can partner with and bring them in maybe to experience your day? Um, your your salon business or your gym or your you know your restaurant it, bring them in to experience your brand and and then tap into them and same thing goes for content right you can you can share their content out you know it's going to be trusted and those are influencers who already have the ears and the hearts of your target ideal customer they're people who your ideal customer is already listening to and the same thing goes for our power tip number seven, which is syndicate like a boss. So syndicating content means that you are sharing your content, your blog with other already popular platforms. Okay. So this would mean, let's say I have my blog at pammarketingnut.com and we have our agency blog at themarketingnuts.com. Each of those has what we call an RSS feed. I take that RSS feed and I create an account at like social media today, um, Inc.com, Forbes.com. I create my profile there and I build a relationship with the company, the person, you know, who owns that platform. And then when I create a new blog post, they automatically see it. I don't have to submit that content to them. Okay, that's the easiest way to do content syndication. They see that content, they like that content, they decide to publish that content, okay? So content syndication is the process of pushing your blog site, your video, your podcast, um, either as a full article, link, or a thumbnail. And you're pushing that to other third-party sites. And when we first started our agency, I'll tell you, uh, the I remember the first day that one of my pieces of content went viral. It was a... Um, uh, Dr. Seuss article. And then I had like a granny tips article for social media. They literally took down our servers that day. I was on a slower hosting provider at that time. And we were down because there was so much content. So that was or so much traffic. That was a good problem to have. But I'll tell you one syndicated platform can change your world. Okay. And particularly if it is a platform where your ideal audience is hanging out, you won't care what's happening on Facebook when you start to do that. Okay, because what happens, then that content has legs, that content has readership, and it's getting shared back to Facebook. And guess who it also gets attributed to? gets attributed to you, to you personally and to your brand. Okay. So you're leveraging the OPC, other people's content and other people's community to build your reach and to work smarter, not just harder. It's not about posting all day or being online 24 seven and live video streaming 24 hours a day. It's about working smarter and, and spending the time the way you want to spend your time. Um, and then power tip number eight, make sure that you are humanizing your brand like a boss. And you need to really be focused on how can you show the human side of your brand so that people can connect to you, so that they will connect and understand the value and the promise that you offer, okay? Uh, who are you? What, are you? what are you about? What's your staff about? Um, how can you show kind of your good, bad, and ugly? Okay. How can you uh, show that you've been down a dirt road before too, and, and things were not always glorious for you? Um, how can you, you know, just show that you're raw and you're real, right? And that's where video, I think one of the reasons that video is so successful is it's helping us all connect as human beings. And the more that you're able to humanize your brand and stop speaking in corporate talk, start using language that your audience understands, 
That's why if you go and you look at my blog, you'll see me always talk about like five tips and 10 tips. I get a lot of pushback in my industry from colleagues are like, why do you do that? Why, you know, you, you, you're such a, you know, deep thinker on some of these topics. I love when you do deep thoughts and that, and why are you doing these stupid five tips? I'm like, because I know what my audience wants, right? I know that they want these things broke down in a very human way. And I can't tell you the number of people, hundreds and thousands over the years that have come and said, I love your five tips. I have them hanging in my office. And I'm, you know, I've had some people at huge brands that have told me they made posters out of that. It's human content. Okay. Tip number nine. (coughs) Sorry, I have to take a drink. Okay. That's a lot of words I just said, wasn't it? All right. So tip number nine is brand like a boss. Okay. So I want you to make sure that you are building a brand architecture. It's not about just picking out pretty colors and, you know, paying the printer down the road to do your logo and do a business card. And then you get your name tag done and you show up at the local networking meeting and you got your brand done wrong, right? You need an architecture that is defining who you are, what you are, who your customers are, what you mean to them right? Your brand needs to understand who are your buyers, right? Your brand needs to be, your messaging needs to be written in a way that it is resonating with your ideal customer. What happens far too many times in business is that people create a brand that is built in an ivory tower with executives. You know, here's the colors I want and here's our corporate messages and they make no sense to your target and ideal customer. Your brand needs to Identify who you are, what you are, but it also needs to help you connect with your ideal customer. We also want to make sure that we are creating, we are reusing, and we are repeating every creative type of brand asset that we can. Now, I don't mean that we're reposting the same things all the time, but what I want us to do is to create templates that we can use over and over again. So, you know, Tell me, do you ever feel, I'd love to see in the comments, that you have enough time to create all the content you need to create? Like, do you, is there ever a day that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to finish all my content? Our content is never going to be done, right? So create the templates for what does a social media post look like from your company? You know, how can I look at that post if it's a quote or if it's a factoid, maybe it's an industry statistic. How can I look at that and know that it comes from your company? Okay. I want to be able to look at your page and anytime I see your content in a feed, there should be something about that other than just your logo that I know it is from you. And so when you create templates, um, then you can reuse those over and over. All you have to do is update the content that's on them. Um, create a cover video, right? And there are some tools that we'll talk about here in a little bit that you can use for that. But take the time to create a Facebook cover video. I did an updated one two days ago and it took me like 10 minutes. Okay, so find those tools. Get geeky and it doesn't have to be perfect. Facebook ad images you can create and reuse. Okay. Create once, use many. Um, put a different picture in there. I have, you know, we use a lot of Adobe Photoshop and I uh we use the same a lot of the same templates. I have several different ones, but when I do an ad, you'll see, you know, they have some similarities. I'm not reinventing the wheel every time I do new content. Um, do not be afraid to use stock photography. Okay, so there are sites like Deposit Photos is one I'm really liking lately. Um, they have a nice like $29 plan that you can get there and um, you get like 30 video, 30 images a month. They have the next one up is like 75, I think. So I mean, that's and, and there's no long term commitment. So find some good stock photography that can be part of your brand architecture, not just part of a blog post. Okay, so if you look at some of the images you see here, and it's a lot of the same content we have in our academy, it's part of a brand architecture. It's planned. It's not just random photos we throw together. Uh, video bumpers, those can really add, you know, some zazz to any of the videos you're creating. And you can, you know, have somebody do those for you out on Fiverr or, you know, some of the other Elant sites for like five or ten dollars. OK, it's The stuff doesn't have to be expensive. Um, Your blog post content flow. So if you're writing blog content that you're wanting to share on Facebook, make it look good. Make it something you're going to be able to easily copy and paste and put it onto, you know, a Facebook note, for example. But have a flow to that. Have it. If you're going to put a call to action image, you know, 
create a template for what that looks like underneath your blog content. If you go and you look at any of our podcast blog recaps or our just blogs, you'll see there is a, a method to the madness. There are certain templates that we use over and over again. The first thing I do when I write a blog post, I copy paste. I don't recreate the bullets every time. I don't recreate the headers. I, I reuse that content, even with the fo orange formatting and you know the bolding and the sizing of the fonts. That's how you're going to get your time back and your life back. Um, and then call to action image. Make sure you are spending time and quality on anything that's driving a call to action um, because that is where you are going to win on Facebook is making sure you're driving people to action um, without saying, follow me and, you know, click like, you know, Facebook is not going to reward you for that behavior. But if you make it very clear what people are going to get on the other end of that click, Facebook's going to love you for that. And then email templates, you know, header images, all of those things can be um, creative that you create once and use many. So power tip number 10 is make sure that you use creative tools like a boss. OK, and there's a reason why I have this simple image here. I don't want you to overcomplicate it. You don't need 50 tools to get started. And I'm, I'm going to give you a long list of some tools, but you don't need all of these at one time. OK, and I'll send you this list that you'll get in your Facebook like like a boss kit. Um, one of my favorites is Adobe. We really are kind of diehard Adobe fans and they have an Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. That I think is like twenty nine dollars a month per user. A lot of people don't know that. So it's a monthly subscription and um, you get access to the full suite of products, everything, video editing, audio editing, um, your photo shop, you know, Illustrator. I really like building things in Illustrator, um, Photoshop. I really have our designer that does that. Canva is great. So if you if you don't want to spend time on Adobe, Canva Canva is great to create um, everything from your Facebook cover images to uh, any branded type of content you want to do, social media posts, um, ebooks, that type of thing. And you can watermark your brand on there. Promo Slidely is one of my favorites lately for creating videos. I'm also testing Wave. And if you look at our cover images or if you, you know, got here through a Facebook ad, and if you could just put in the comments too, I'd love to know how you got here. Like what? was it that got you here today? Was it being on our email list? Was it an image you saw on LinkedIn or on Twitter, a video? Like what was it that, what was the crave that brought you here? Um, but with tools like the promo slightly and the wave, you can create a Facebook video in like 10 minutes. Okay. So they have the stock photography. They have the stock audio. Any of these apps you see here, you want to make sure that you are using an app where you have access or you have rights to whatever music that you are adding. There are some apps that are out there that you do not have the rights to that music and Facebook will take it down and you don't want to get flagged like that by Facebook. Okay. You want to stay in good, good grace with Facebook. Okay. So make sure any creative that you are putting on any of your content, you have rights to that content. And that includes audio, that includes video. Um, so that's why I don't really like to use free images uh, because of the risk factor. You never know in a blog post is going to go viral and that you're going to be over that use of views that you had rights to that free image and wind up owing more than what it would have cost you the $15 to buy, you know, $3 to buy that image in the first place. Animoto is another great tool for creating videos. We do our annual kind of annual review videos on there. Um, as well as you can do some short form video. Adobe Spark video, Adobe Spark Post are great. Um, they also have the mobile apps. Flipagram, you can put images together. Uh, Legend um, is easy for you to uh, put videos with uh, text as well. So both of those will create videos for you. Hyperlapse is really good. If you have maybe a long day, you have a project that you want to showcase, um, maybe somebody painting, doing something, making pizzas, and you just let it run. You let your camera run and then it hyperlapses it and put it really fast together. So it's like a really shortened video. Um, that's fun for travel as well. I've done some fun things like when I traveled to Greece on business, um, as we drove to the hotel, I filmed it and, you know, then ran the hyperlapse video that showed the whole um, the drive in. Image quote and word swag, those are great, great for just creating quick quotes. Uh, I, I use word, I used to use word swag, swag a lot. And then um, the face tune will remove blemishes, red eyes. It can smooth the skin a little bit. I'm not a big one for morphing your body on images. I think that's really scary. Some of the ways people are making themselves look like a different person, you know, don't 
carve out part of your chin and, and make your eyes 10 times the size they are. But I like Facetune because it can do some um, just softening of your face a little bit and um, fix some things. Pick frame and pick sticks. Pick stitch are great for framing tools for your images. And then the built in Instagram layout tool is great to um, lay out, you know, to put multiple images together. Some of my go to tools for Facebook include uh, mini chat. I mentioned that earlier, and that's going to help you take advantage of Facebook Messenger and be able to do campaigns and automate the way that you engage somebody who subscribes to your page. This is great. We do a lot of work with salons, for example, with Redken and L'Oreal, and we're making sure all of them are setting these things up where, um, you know, they, somebody can send you a message on messenger and say, Hey, how do I book an appointment? You can have something that goes back to them and tells them exactly how you can give them a menu, tell them where to go. You can send them to different URLs so you can get really creative and it doesn't take very long. I mean, you can set a broadcast up in literally 10 minutes and you, you don't have to be that technical. So once you figure it out, it's really easy. Facebook pages app. I love if you are managing a Facebook page, you've got to have the Facebook pages app. Okay. Um, messenger app is a gotta have the Facebook ads app. If you're doing any Facebook ads, you need that. I love, I use it on my mobile device. You know, you'll get notifications, tells you if an ad is performing good or not. Um, particularly if you're doing a lot of like AB testing, you can shut something down if it's not performing or, you know, boost up that budget if it's going well. Uh, Sprout social. We use that with a lot of our clients, small up to enterprise. I mean, it's got a great user interface for managing your social, managing your Facebook posts. I love the analytics that it gives us for Facebook pages. So um, it may definitely be worth looking at just for the analytics. And it's easy to post and curate content. Huge value with that. We've been a customer of them for a long time and a partner. They're a partner of ours too. Hootsuite. Um, I really use for Hootsuite on my mobile device more than anything um, for sharing content. And I have a lot of searches there where I curate and find content. Buffer app is great for curating third-party content. And um, you can, you know, I love using Buffer on my desktop and mobile device. So if you find content you love out on the social web, you just can click the Buffer button and put it into a queue. So it will share that content for you and you set the schedule. So you, you know, I have limited time to find good content on the web. You know, every day I usually set some time aside in the morning or late at night to uh, see the news and what's happening. And I, I don't want to share all 10 posts that I find at one time. So I just put them into my buffer. Um, Hootsuite or, and Sprout Social, they have those same tools where you can like put it into a hopper as well. So most of the social media management tools will have that ability. Um, BuzzSumo, I mentioned that earlier. That is a must have tool for you to see hot content. You can search by any keyword hashtags um brand 24 i love that for identifying influencers in your niche um doing social listening seeing who's talking about what a lot of times you may think you have comp you know we have clients that come to us and they say oh this this competitor's killing us on social and then we go run the report and they're not <laughs> so a lot you know a lot of times these tools are good to use just to to like calm your mind a little bit. You may see posts all the time from one of your competitors. It's probably because you're visiting their webpage and then they're targeting you, right? So they're targeting you with content. They're targeting you with ads. So a lot of times it's good to see, okay, maybe they're not getting as much reach as what I thought they were. Um, but don't waste your time always looking over the fence either. And then um, we mentioned promo slidely. Thank you so much to everybody for your time today. I hope that this information was very valuable for you. Please do not um, hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. We would love to see you join us in uh, the Social Profit Factor Academy and um, you know get your plan going for the year. Uh, really get a content strategy going so that you can um, work Facebook like a boss this year. I wish you the greatest of success and hope you have a wonderful weekend as well. Thank you. Are you a small business owner, entrepreneur, or work on a corporate team and tired of wasting money on social media training courses that are nothing more than random videos thrown up on a wall like webinar spaghetti? Finally, there's a solution to get you on the fast track to social media business success and help you learn how to generate brand awareness, leads, and sales without breaking the bank. Visit socialprofitfactor.com and use coupon code Zoom. Again, that's socialprofitfactor.com, coupon code Zoom.
If you're ready to Zoom your business and Zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash Zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor.